Good morning all. Um, trust you all slept well and um, um, in line with our recent Father's Day here in South Africa, I thought it's um, helpful to just say about a bit about what the word's saying about fathers. Um, yes, the word focuses a lot about um, parents or father and mother, but this morning I'll share on, on um, mainly on fathers. So you might wonder what's the significance of fathers? The significance of fathers can, our significance of fathers can sometimes be skewed by our subjective viewpoints. What do I mean with that? Our own understanding and experience can skew um, the significance of fathers. To see the significance of fathers, it will be freeing to get a subjective viewpoint from God. That is a viewpoint that's not influenced by our own understanding or feelings and experiences. So what does the word say about fathers? It says a lot. <laughs> the answer to that, friends, is huge. The Bible says a lot and gives a lot of weight to fathers. The, um, for example, God himself, he, his own revelation to us is as a father. This is the first significance. Exodus 4, 22 verse 23, he says, Israel, my firstborn son, and I told you, let my son go. So he is addressing Pharaoh and, and Egypt to let Israel go. Psalm 103 says, As far as the east from the west, as far as he removed our transgressions from our sins, from us, sorry, as removed our transgressions from us, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. We see in Exodus 34, um, God reveals himself to Moses in a, in a cloud on the mountain and passing by Moses. God says, and um, from verse 6, he says, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate, gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. So here we see God the Father um, showing his attributes directly to Moses. We see in Luke 11, verse 1 to 4, something amazing. Yeah, um, Jesus' disciples asked, asked Jesus how they should pray. And here is Jesus saying, saying to them, He says, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. So he opens the example of prayer with Father. Um, we then... Yeah, so in the Old and New Testament, there's many scriptures um, that speak about Father. And if you would like to get a good um, understanding of the Father out of God, go study the life of Jesus. In um, Okay, so then the second significance, sorry, I'm just, the second significance um, of Fathers in the Bible is that it's included in the Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments was given by God himself um, to the nation Israel, and its um, nations have built their legal, their moral systems on these. It's, uh, um, yeah, it's, as I said, it's given by God, and it carries tremendous weight. Um, the likes of America, Britain, have built their, their, um, the way they conduct themselves on these commandments and their, their legal systems. So the fifth commandment says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land your God is giving you. It's interesting that um, commandments one through four um, focuses on mankind loving God. It's an upward focus. And then commandment five through ten focuses, it's a sideward commandment, um, uh, focuses on mankind loving mankind. And commandment five is really the middle um, of these two sets if you can say that, almost as if God placed it there as an introduction for loving mankind. It's also interesting that the commandment reads, honor your father and your mother, honor them. We can honor bad people. We can honor people that have done bad things. It's God's responsibility to, 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 to judge people, um, but we can honor them. We should therefore still honor our father um, that is, if, if, if he's not perfect. So we see God here as the ultimate heavenly father, giving examples to us. And let's be honest, what a privilege, what a privilege to have a perfect father in heaven.
And then the lastly, just in closing, um, the impact of fathers. The reality is there are many people in our life who have such great impact on our life as our fathers. Sometimes our greatest scars, deepest scars can come from them and do come from them. But also our deepest promotions come from them. Big weight, deepest promotions come from them. How does God use a father builder to build a nation like South Africa? Um, well, South Africa consists, someone once said, South Africa is built on communities, communities on families, and families on fathers. God uses fathers to shape communities and families and nations um, to, to follow his ways. All right, so in summary, we see that honoring our fathers are high up on God's agenda for mankind. And therefore, God's heart for us is that we live in peace with our fathers. It's our responsibility to honor our fathers. And it's God's will, and it's it's God's will to teach, guide, and correct our fathers. See, this is the thing. We know God is our ultimate, everlasting Father, but it's crucial that we understand that He's also a good Father. So, in closing, won't you pray with me, dear LV Father? I thank you for my earthly father. Lord, I do understand that it's important for you and good for me to honor my earthly father so I can be at peace with him and um, it sets an example for how I honor you as the ultimate father. And therefore, I re herewith I, re uh, um, I, I, I repent of any um, wrongdoings I've got against my father um, and I ask for forgiveness for that, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love, your kindness your mercy and guidance on my life, my good heavenly Father. Amen. Guys, enjoy your day. Cheers. Bye-bye. Eh?